just quickly before we go into any games, let's take a look over the bracket. Um, you can see, obviously, uh, I'm starting here, so I actually have to play one extra round. Um, but yeah, uh, went through completely undefeated, actually, which, um, you know, is quite nice. Um, you know, it's a fairly healthy tournament, like over 32 players, um, which isn't insane, but for dualist levels, that's pretty good. And you can see there are some, um, you know, like, well-known players that signed up, right? Um, just didn't all make it through to the end, uh, even through the lose bracket. I think, like, a couple of them, like, I think Decoy didn't um, even, like, attend, but... Yeah, some other players just got knocked out uh, in the loser's bracket, as is bound to happen. Um, so yeah, I think I had, um, I guess I'd say, like, somewhat lucky um, run through. Like, a couple of times during the bracket, like, I think this guy's on line R. Um, yeah, and then, uh, yeah, Mad Max on line R. So, yeah, a couple of times he got knocked out just before he came to fight me, which, um, I guess, helped my matchups a little bit, didn't know having to play line art. it's a bit scary but yeah like uh everyone who um you know comes through here is like prove themselves right so no easy matches um and yeah just before we head into the games i'll just say that like these these players did sign up like thinking that they were going to um have their replay reviewed then they just like signed up for fun right so keep any criticisms to my plays um and yeah hope you enjoy the games So we're against Status Cuomo in the uh, first round. I guess I should have like paused and uh, talked about my replays there. Sorry, replaces. Um, I think it was like a Heaven's Eclipse and some unplayable stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm just starting with a Lantern Fox and a Heartseeker here. Obviously, I'm well aware that my Lantern Fox is pretty likely just to get donked by this with Blade Adept, but I just said to myself, screw it, um, I don't want to play it back and then probably get smart but anyway, let's just uh, play it while we got it here, we get one Phoenix Fire off it, it'll be fine, and it lets us set up this um, Art Seeker as well at the same time, so if he chooses to um, hit by a Lantern Fox here, then I get a Phoenix Fire and the Heart Seeker gets to clean up the a 4-1, and if he wants to take the mana tile, then he can't get that in Fox with his 4-3. So, yeah, I just decided to not worry too much about what could possibly go wrong here and just do the thing that's strongest for me to do. Um, but of course, he actually does have a way to uh, take the mana tile and uh, attack with both. And he has some art as well, so basically everything that went wrong, or that could have gone wrong, did go wrong. Uh, but never worry, um, we'll just remove that one for, I really wanted to um, set up the four wins, but just uh, running it in the back felt like way too um, defensive and just weak to me, like you've got to just hope they don't have it, he just used his um, martyrdom, so I was just hoping that this would stick, but of course he yeah, had another one. Sometimes he goes like that, but at least, um, at least his Martin's are out of the way now, right? Um, and this weird position on the uh, wind blade lets me clear it. It's good for me. Yeah, clear it with uh, keeping my tusk for alive specifically. Uh, now that we've seen two Martin's, I was really hoping this uh, lantern fox didn't uh, get taken by the third one. And yeah, happily it wasn't, so that's good for us. Uh, I think I'm probably going to replace uh, yeah, Mana Vortex there. The Mana Vortexes are of course great when you have like all your um, spell trigger cards, but uh, when you don't, you, uh, it's pretty rare that you want to use it. I don't typically like casting them just to draw a card either, um, because they're so useful when you're doing your spell combo turns, and they're so useful in combination with Heaven's Eclipse to like make that turn so much smoother. Um, so yeah, that's why that ended up uh, going away. Um, and yeah, luckily for me, he didn't answer my board, so we actually have uh, some initiative for once. Um, but we're just gonna deal with his board here um, on account. Um, we're so far off lethal um, and 
Yeah, you can't really let this kind of stuff live. It'll clobber your head so hard. Like, if you think about how much damage uh, a Windblade Adept does, it's a four mana. Sorry, it's a four attack. Uh, two drop. <laughs> it, like, hits you twice. It's Spyro Techniques. You, you can't really let those minions um, go unchecked. But we actually have a good clear here on account of um, getting another Phoenix Fire off our Lantern Fox. So we can just hit the Silver Yard and then double lantern fox which i imagine is what we're going to see here uh, and then that even lets me have uh, an additional task ball to go face and yeah i guess uh, even our heart seeker gets to uh, ping for one damage as well generally don't think it's worth using the jugs there to like set up some I don't know crazy play because um, there's gonna be big minions like this uh, four six that we can't deal with but we also <laughs> don't want on the board so we'll just probably jax that away not the ideal turn because I end up using my inner focus on this heart seeker here I should probably put it to real time that gives me some more time uh, to talk about those yeah. Because, yeah, I didn't want him to just be able to walk in and hit my Heartseeker, so we'll in focus it uh, away to the corner here. Um, and yeah, I just use the same Spine Seal because I'm going to draw three cards at the end of turn, which is, yeah, why I uh, use those cards, even though it looks a bit wasteful. Um, you know, just use them so I draw something. Uh, to get them back into. Obviously, like now you draw a Chakri Avatar and you're like, oh, in a focusing that would be really good. Um, but you wouldn't have drawn those if um, wouldn't have drawn those if I didn't cast my spells. So yeah. That's uh, that's why they went off. Kinda sucks that, you know, I played five spells in that turn and didn't have anything triggering on them, but what can you do? Uh, and yeah, it's just seeing a zero is not that upsetting because I mean yeah, I, as I said in the first video, like if you trap them inside a, a Zia, then you know, they're dead to 12 damage. They cannot heal about that. Um, oh, it would be way more scary if you did like Sundrop Rejuvenator here, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, have uh, exactly 7 damage with Double Phoenix Fire and uh, the little mouse. I could actually choose to hit uh, with face here. I'm not entirely sure why I'd didn't because I could have then put one extra damage onto it. I guess I just didn't want to uh, take damage myself or like two damage on myself or one damage on them but it honestly could be worth it. And yeah just setting up some stuff that plays around in our, just a little bit with the staircase formation. And yeah feeling quite good now I have two chakras on board and yeah a big heavens eclipse turn. Um, potentially coming like I could maybe even get both Chakri avatars to connect um, with this inner focus uh, if he like positions poorly um, although I don't imagine both survive um, so probably inner focus might just go on a heart seeker or something but of course we'll have to like wait and see what the opponent does but at this point you're definitely like counting up lethal end you know, thinking you're pretty likely to have it. Like, a Heaven's Eclipse turn like this, with two um, spell trigger uh, effects on board is going to be very really sweet. I was actually surprised that um, they approached. I don't feel like that's right, but I don't think it's going to matter too much. They definitely could still like do an ephemeral shroud and a martyrdom or something, and then they'd have a chance. So yeah, circle of life. So yeah, um, yeah, having them take one extra damage would not matter at all because they would just heal it up. Um, and now, yeah, this looks like a super lethal um, with the, the jacks on the chakri and a bunch of spells. It's pretty much impossible to not draw three damage here, and each spell. Is already like adding one extra damage on top of whatever it's already going to do because we've got um, yeah each 
it's going to give me one bonus uh, attack from the Jack Avatar. So, uh, yeah, we just unleash it. And yeah, it's a million damage, so they're just dead. So there you go, that's um, a really tough matchup uh, in Lion R, uh, taken down. It's certainly not unwinnable. Uh, yeah, just sometimes um, you, know, you have a pretty reasonable draw and um, take them out. And get a, a little bit of a BM overkill just to show how much damage we had. Yes, that's uh, one game down. Um, on to game two. Uh, let's put it on real time so you have a bit of time. Obviously, this is going to be a full replace. Uh, even though like some of the cards are really good, you kind of just want two drop to play. Uh, I say two drop, but the one drop is also acceptable. Uh, just replace Heaven's Eclipse away. Um, we will hope to find that at a more adequate time. And yeah, let's uh, uh, get this started. Kind of like the Abyssin matchup, uh, as I said in the, the first video. Uh, especially now that Nice for Assassin does not just delete Fox, and wow, they have no play, so really good for me. So I don't have to spend my mana and time dealing with it. I'm just gonna set up this box in my map now. We'll save the Chakri for like a, a turn where we can make it a bit bigger with some spells going off. And that's why we held on to the mana decks there, because I was basically just planning on casting Chakri at some point in the near future. The, the only sort of weakness on this play here is that uh, if they have something that can hit the fox twice, I don't have the, the spot for it in my hand, the uh, last thing is fire, but that's pretty unlikely, so, um, yeah. Well, they do have the Spectral Blade, which does clear off the fox in one hit, but I'm really not that, like, upset about this, I mean, because... I'm just like looking at my hand and thinking I can like clear off this uh, Spectral Blade, it's only going to give them one healing. Um, but then they played two minions and now I'm like, ah, oh, can I do two minions? I was planning on playing this Chakri. So I don't think I'm going to replace anything. The whole hand looks pretty good. Um, but yeah, I just have to figure out the exact way to deal with anything. I wouldn't love to... Um, in a focus, the heart seeker just to ping off. I'd rather like in a focus the kind of assassin because that does four damage. That's obviously more than one. Uh, yeah. So in the end, I choose to hit face. I take four damage, um, but it doesn't really bother me. Um, and yeah, I can actually even set up the Chakri avatar um, if I choose not to answer the healing mystic, which was a tough decision. But I've played it out of range of uh, the Healing Mystic, and he just used his uh, Spectral Blade anyway. So uh, this 4-5 chakra is going to be really hard to answer. Um, and then, since we do it this way, we can maybe even uh, think about just sending the Phoenix Fire face now. Which, you know, that's pretty good. Uh, and then we draw three cards because we played a Mana Vortex. So, yeah, we're, we're pretty... Uh, Pretty happy with that turn. Couldn't quite get everything we wanted in, like killing the hit would be nice, but uh, yeah, I ultimately decided it wasn't worth it. We can do so much face damage that it's gonna pile on the pressure. Like way more than just having one less minion. They've got another spectral blade, but like, as before, like it's only gonna heal them one HP and they're gonna make a mistake here and attack from behind the Kaido Assassin just to take a two free damage. It's going to counterattack before if you attack from behind, so um, good for me, I suppose. Yeah, and all our damage is pressuring out this Void Pulse early, which means it's not going to be available to uh, tackle any Blood Rage Mask we might have in the future. But this is actually like quite nice positioning. It means I can't uh, have Shidai and Shakri Avatar attack 
So I was trying to count up a potential lethal here. Um, like if I play Chakri on the tile and then Heaven's Eclipse into a Junction focus, that's probably going to be it. Um, so you sort of have to weigh the likelihood of getting that there. Um, and yeah, what's going to hit uh, to remove this Spectral Blade? Am I going to remove the Spectral Blade at all? Because obviously it's got a bunch of two ones that die to my one one. So there's a bunch of ways you can play this turn. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the quote unquote best is. Um, but I didn't feel like too pressured that I had to, um, you know, go and um, like win the game by hitting with Shaddai. So I just uh, used Shaddai uh, to clear one of the minions here. And I think I calculated that it would still be lethal if I drew the cards I needed Jaxan in a focus. Or maybe also a Saber Spide Seal. Um, but we only got one Jax to get in a focus for our Jack race, so uh, I don't believe this is lethal. So uh, we are just going to see. Uh, yeah, I mean, hit for still a big bunch of damage. It's going to be like way more damage than can really uh, be happily sustained. And yeah, choosing to mm, clear off the Spectral Blade here. Just um, yeah, make sure that's gone. Yeah, I mean, we put them so low that um, it's basically untenable for them to sort of win here, I think. I don't know how they're done six mana, sort of clear both Chakris and heal up enough to be able to win the game. So here's the nice sort of change actually being uh, more useful, because it's like a punish now on a body. Um, so they can't clear the Chakra up top, but this Raya the Unroll is not going to do it there. Uh, very, very dead to uh, juxtaposition and outrage mask and yeah, everything. Um, so yeah, another clean victory for Spell High. Again, we've got uh, quite a bit of overkill damage, which yeah, that's often tend to happen. You, know, you could like be struggling like one or two off for so long and then like when when you have it you uh, absolutely blast into the shadow realm which is very satisfying actually right so we're on to our first vitruvian uh matchup of the tournament um, and I'm actually relatively happy to see a heart secret in my opening hand. I think it's like quite annoying for them to deal with. Like it kind of has to be a siphon energy, or, or a blood tier, I guess. Um, if it is a siphon energy, then um, yeah, a bit of a pain for them to um, then later on be siphoning your four winds and uh, lantern foxes. So um, yeah, and actually, you notice so uh, I have the task board opener possible to me here. I don't go with it. I've like talked a little bit about the task board opener previously and later on I do actually play a Vitruvian opponent who's like playing a sort of the Mazer Zoo list which um, actually does make a lot more use of the Mantars so maybe it would be correct to just play the task board onto the Mantar here um, but also like the one thing about task board you know, is playing it lets them know you have it in hand um, so that's the downside but also I wanted to play around uh, Bone Swarm if I just go ahead and play the Tusk Boar uh, and take the tile and they can bomb swing my 1 1. I guess that's probably not the end of the world. Like, maybe I should have just played it and took the tile here. Vitruvian's like unlikely to be able to just kill the Tusk Boar and punish me um, for having a heart seeker nearby at the same time. Um, but yeah, that was, that was my reasoning there. Um, I guess at the end of the day, he didn't actually need the mana tile to play his 1 drop and uh, double fast wish. So it's okay, it's fine. Um, and yeah, but we, we are just going to clear off with the Phoenix Fire, um, save our Tusk Balls, because uh, obviously they're much better hitting into uh, two attack things. Um, Phoenix Fire I can always just uh, go there. I'm probably going to end up replacing this Heaven's Eclipse. Like, if you look at my hand, there's so much uh, 
card draw in it that we're probably not going to need the Heaven's Eclipse for a little while. We could also replace the Mana Vortex, but I mean, it, we might replace it into some spell we want to cast, so that's that. Um, we see the, uh, the little flying dude here. So that's going to give him an artifact. Um, yeah, we definitely do want to kill that because it can like uh, easily fly over and clear up our Heartseeker or like delete a Lantern Fox for only one. Like you, you should want to think how many of your Lantern Foxes. I was just wondering here, like if I could do something with the Lantern Fox and everything, but I obviously can't. So then I was considering like, is my Tusk Ball going to just hit directly into this, or are we gonna like hit an inner focus? Uh, obviously, I do hit an inner focus as you can see, but I think that's probably not correct. In inner focus is zero mana. Um, you can like play it out basically anytime. Um, but you know, it it's getting in for three damage, which is pretty reasonable. That's like a pretty fine case for, uh, for an inner focus to get. Uh, three damage and yeah I was just looking at my hand that like has a bunch of draw stuff um, and thinking like uh, maybe I'm gonna need to, to, to get some cards out of hand but it's zero mana, mana so getting it out of hand isn't really an issue is it but that's what we went with um, so you know whatever um, and yeah the stuff you get is immediately under threat by the heart seeker but also uh, we drew a blood rage mask um, so that's obviously also really good at ping off the opponent's artifacts. And their turn, I mean, this probably loses them the game with how weak this turn is. It's just a sand trap. And <laughs> it's just a sand trap against Songhai. Which, if I don't draw a Jax off my Heaven's Eclipse at some point, like I'll probably just naturally draw into a Jax eventually anyway. And yeah, absolutely nothing developed here. So I still have free reign to set up. Um, and yeah, it's a choice because I could. Um, I don't have to Heaven's Eclipse here. I could have uh, like just done a Mana Vortex to ping off the artifact and play the Tusk War. Um, but yeah, um, obviously drawing a bunch of cards now is a bit more uh, useful in terms of getting use of the Mana Vortex. And, uh, yeah, it's just seemed fine to me. Just uh, set everything up for next turn. And then we can have like a, you know, a big Jux or whatever. The funny thing about him not developing a minion is that uh, if I did draw a Jux, this Lantern Fox still wouldn't be able to get in anywhere. Um, yeah, although I guess I've always got the, the Tusk Wall that I can hit and then Jux at some hit point, so yeah, it's not really a saving grace for them. And the cards we draw are pretty gas. Uh, it's really nice to get the other Blood Rage Mask. The Mana Vortex is going to let us dump our whole hand here um, for 6 mana. And I think, yeah, I mean, at this point, like, I'm counting up how much damage I have, which is like, each of these is three, so it's nine. And then with two Blood Rage Masks, each of these is eight, so they need to uh, heal a lot or, like, clear my stuff in order to not die here. Um, which just is uh, not enough here, and yeah, we, we get to do Songhai things. Uh, it's just obviously... Uh, Doing one last count uh, never hurts to double check your math before you uh, actually uh, start doing the play. And we have it, so yeah, we're gonna walk up and hit Xerix. Um, I hit first and then equip Blood Rage Mask, even though it doesn't matter because they're dead, but um, I guess good habits um, is uh, nice. And then everything goes face, and yeah, they're dead. It's really hard to have a couple of weak turns against. Uh, spell mine because when they get to develop their stuff and uh, b build up a hand full of cards without being pressured uh, yeah they're, they're pretty likely to be able to build lethal combos and, uh, we did All right we are getting uh, on to uh, later rounds now players who have like beaten their competition uh, as they go uh, I didn't quite see the replace, but um, yeah, we're happy enough to start with Kaido Assassin. Keeping the four wins, because I think it's so good in the matchup. Um, and yeah, Lantern Fox is going to be our three mana play, or if we ramp onto four, that's good as well. Pond does have an A thing, which 
it definitely stumped me a bit because I was looking at this juicy juxtaposition with the kind of assassin you could always like take the tile, play, uh, say a lantern fox behind it, then jux, you know, whatever their play was, deal four damage to it. So they've saved themselves from that, but um, only for the time being. Um, I'm just sort of thinking how I want to play around any sort of silly grasps or something. Um, it's not super scary, but um, yeah, I obviously want to play the Heartseeker in the back, the Lantern Fox in the front, and yeah, we could run Kaido forward, but I'm happy enough for it to be sort of back here. Because we have a Jax, we can uh, do some tricky plays with it. And this is already looking great because our opponent skipped turn one, which is. I would say it's quite hard to do when your player 2 is, you know, you have even more options at 3 mana. Um, unfortunate. And hey look, uh, the knights are uh, enough. Um, really, uh, really actually um, helping us here because uh, previously that uh, fox would have just been vaporized. Now we uh, actually get to draw a phoenix fire. And I'm spending my time thinking of like, oh, do I play the four winds and like, Use the the Jax to kill this Night Star Assassin, um, but I think I see a better line because we can play the Four Winds behind Casava, uh, and then uh, yeah, Jax that with the Kaido Assassin, and our Kaido Assassin's in backstab position. Our Four Winds is in the back line, and then yeah, just Shadai, um, and the Heartseek can, can clear this three three. So yeah, we don't need to, uh, to backstab that to, uh, to get clear off the board. We're happy enough taking three damage um, because we're going to heal it all anyway. Uh, and yeah, we'll just uh, pump up the, the damage here. I'm not really worried about letting him have a mana tile with. We're so diverse in our threats, like they're all split apart, all sort of different uh, things need to follow me, like you need something to ping off the heart seeker, like something big to deal with the, the four wins, and then yeah, just the medium threat of the, the kind of, uh, you know, in the perfect position. And yeah, absolutely happy to draw just more four wins. I've already said I think it's quite hard for Abyss to deal with when they're in this situation with nothing on board and plenty of other stuff to worry about. Probably we don't need another Kaido Assassin, we just want more spells at this point. Um, but yeah, they've <laughs> they've played one card so far. Uh, we've played uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so I think we're a little bit ahead. So it looks like they are going to have the answer to the forwards, which um, will make the, the game a game again, at least uh, for a little bit. But I um, don't think it's going to be enough. Just like way too far ahead, really. So I'm on my five mana turn with two mana tiles. Yeah, I've had one extra mana. I could play the Kaido and uh, and the Four Winds and the Phoenix Fire, um, but I just um, skipped over playing the Kaido, even though like it would actually be good just to play behind them here. So maybe I could have considered it. But, um, yeah, we replaced into something good, it was just direct damage. I'm not sure I'll put that card is correct, but if I play it then I'm not playing a spell. I guess that doesn't matter that much. I just sort of wanted some immediate value from my forwards as I played it. Um, and yeah, I guess I was looking for a lethal as well. Like, uh... No, I guess there wasn't a lethal. I got like the most damage I could from the mana there. But I put them to one anyway. Um, basically impossible for them to win now. What do they need? Void Pulse, Void Pulse, Spectral Blade. Yeah, it's probably not gonna happen, is it? They heal uh, two more with a Healing Mystic or some Void Pulse, it's not just doomed. Still not good. 
So I could uh, trade my four ins here, but um, I don't want to do that. Um, just it being on board is going to be way more valuable than killing a 4-4. Um, so I imagine we hit with face, play the Blood Rage Mask, play a 4 ins move all our backline minions away, and yeah, just in a focus for a 3 bonus damage. It puts them not quite to be full again, but um, they probably used like all the healing they had on the last turn to not die this turn. Um, so we basically just put them back to uh, where they were last turn. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's a fantastic draw in case they uh, actually manage to pull something out here. Um, we're gonna deal a bazillion damage with uh, Heaven's Eclipse spells. Alright, stay tuned for part two where we head into the finals.